Let's pretend. Let's say that you're on LinkedIn scanning connection requests. And as you do this, you are seeing names, but you're focusing on reading professional headlines when you're making your decision if you should accept or not. Full stop. How do you feel when you read headlines that say something to the effect of, I help small businesses 10x their leads, or transform your marketing challenges into business success? How do you feel when you read these types of words? I feel like, this person wants sex on the first date. This person's number one priority is letting me know they are about to sell to me. If you want to blend in with this sea of annoying sellers who people are actually trying to avoid, go ahead, communicate what you sell to who you sell and what is in it for them right there in your LinkedIn headline. Scream at the top of your lungs. Connect with me and watch me start selling your ass. Because that is what your customers are used to. Connecting and immediately being pitched. Or you can notice what everybody is doing and you can do the opposite. Because in sales outreach, the majority is always going to be wrong. Case in point, your LinkedIn headline. Formatting it like most sellers do, being clear about what you sell, to who and how, is going to hurt more than it's going to help you. So instead, consider doing what Johnny Stacker does and learn from his experiment. Now check this out. About a year ago or so, he told me, while everybody he competes with zigs, maybe he should zag. His theory was, by not peddling anything and instead letting people wonder what he was selling or why he wanted to connect seemed smarter, more captivating, and probably he thought would create more intrigue. He said to me, Jeff, I figure I can stand out by not having one of these bullshit, obvious, follow the herd type of LinkedIn headlines. Fast forward to today. Johnny recently made a post on LinkedIn saying, the more literal and descriptive you are about what you do in your LinkedIn title or your LinkedIn headline, the lower connect acceptance rate you're going to get because you are less interesting. Now he arrived at this conclusion after A-B testing his theory for 12 months. He says the level of engagement, connection requests, and qualified leads drops precisely in proportion to how descriptive I am about what I do in his professional headline. This is exactly what my experience has been after changing my LinkedIn headline a few years ago, guys. Johnny takes the words right out of my mouth when he says, this is because all we are used to seeing on every connection request that pops up is I help, we drive, we transform, etc., etc." So when you do not do that, you're standing out. And not only stand out, but not look like a seller. You attract, you create curiosity about yourself. But wait, there's more. When we say, I help X people with Y problems, or I help A people achieve B type of goals, when we say that, we appear low status to customers. Eric Byrne spent a huge chunk of his behavioral science career studying why people behave this way. Why, when we say, I'm here to help, people actually hear, I'm here to sell. He called his work transactional analysis. Now, if you're interested in going deeper into transactional analysis, check the link in the description for my video on how to put transactional analysis to work for you when performing outreach. For now, just know this. People are repelled, they're pushed away when they see our words because they are conditioned to understand that we are trying to persuade them. We're trying to look powerful. Johnny puts it perfectly. He says, to be powerful, we must act like an important person acts. Important people don't sing their own praises and offer their value proposition CV style or resume style. We need to communicate the opposite 
of what everyone else is doing. Real quick, here's another way of looking at this. With a good, strong LinkedIn headline, you transfer your confidence. Your headline doesn't need to be catchy. It needs to express confidence by being a little bit ambivalent. Now, ambivalence is the experience of having an attitude towards someone or something that contains both positive and negative components. So in other words, you've got to want it, <laughs> but not care so much. Don't try so hard. You've got to avoid asking for sex on the first date by being indirect about what you want. So instead of being super clear, be a little bit unclear. Tony Hughes says, you must radiate confidence that you don't need the business. You must educate in a detached fashion before you make any attempts to persuade someone. Early on, Tony says you should entice, wait, entice again, tease, and then wait until the other person is screaming for it. Like a good lover, consider the more interest that you show in prospects, the more repulsed they are probably going to become. The more that you show active interest, the less interesting you become. Just like courtship. Myself, I changed my LinkedIn headline and instantly got more connection requests. I also got more good connection requests coming at me that I probably wouldn't have received before. And by good, I mean, I've got a shot at selling to these people. Plus, people who want to connect with me would frequently tell me, you know, the reason that they asked to connect was my headline. It pulls them. Remember, doing what everyone else does is an insurance policy to blend in. And it screams, I'm a marketer. Connect with me and get ready for me to pitch your ass. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. Okay, before I go, think about it this way. People who are not very good at sales or marketing usually try to compensate for it. And this shows up in how they present themselves. Don't be one of these people. People who are truly masters at what they do with what product or service they represent, they tend to be relaxed. They are deep into their trade. They are professionals who don't need to look shiny or nerdy to sell. Forgive the expression, but they are not trying to polish a turd. <laughs> okay, take a step towards mastery. Stop copying what a majority of people do. Stop patterning the losers and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna give you more tips on engaging the people who you want to influence using curiosity. All the best and stay curious.